I want to bring in quickly Polomi Saha on this broadcast. We also have with us our consulting editor Rajdeep Sardesai for his first reaction. But Polomi, quickly to you for that update. The government defending what's happened, the suspensions, saying that the opposition resorted to unparliamentary means in their protest. But it's difficult really to justify nearly 100 MPs being suspended in this manner. Has it ever happened before of late, Polomi? Well, not definitely in the past decade. The last time round in 1989 was when 63 MPs had been suspended. In the same year, 103 members of parliament had offered in their resignations in protest over the Beaufort's uh, scam. So, uh, uh, you know, not in recent memory that we can remember that 92 members of parliament, it was only in 29, uh, 2019, I beg your pardon, when close to about 50 MPs were in fact suspended from parliament. So this is possibly the largest number of suspensions that Parliament has seen in a single session. Uh, many tough questions will be asked, uh, Akshita, as far as the central uh, government is uh, concerned, because the opposition is only going to mount pressure on the centre now inside Parliament yeah. for the remainder days of the winter session and outside as well. It's going to be a hot topic when they meet tomorrow at 3 p.m. at the Ashoka Hotel in Delhi as uh, well. But mm -hmm. yes, uh, the government says that, you know, it's not about asking questions as far as the parliament, uh, parliament security breach is concerned. You can ask questions. The speaker has been responding. He's been calling for all party stakeholders to come meet with him, uh, consult with him. Suggestions all are welcome. But to disrupt parliament continuously seeking an answer from the home minister whose jurisdiction it isn't as far as parliament security is concerned. That is unwarranted because legislative agenda is taking right. a backseat as a result you know, of this Delhi disruption. security is under Home Minister Amit Shah and that is the opposition's justification when they say that the Home Minister must speak and that's why they've been constantly raising that demand. The opposition's counter constantly is what's wrong in asking the Home Minister to speak? If he's willing to speak outside Parliament, why not in Parliament? I want to bring in Rajdeep Sardesai also on this. Rajdeep, Nearly 100 opposition MPs being suspended. And I keep saying this, this is unprecedented, this kind of a crackdown on opposition MPs. And it's going to be very difficult, really, for the government to justify this. Well, what has happened, Paolomi, is a complete breakdown in trust between the government and the opposition. And this has been building up for a long time. Remember, this is arguably the last session of this uh, Lok Sabha. You will have a short session when the budget, uh, when a... Vote on account is taken in the first week of February and then you go into general elections. For the last four and a half years, we've seen consistently at various times uh, the opposition and the government in a face-to-face -face confrontation. Now it's reached breaking point. I think it's reached the point of no return mm -hmm. and the timing is significant. Just a week ago, the government won three uh, state elections emphatically. And that has given the government the confidence to believe that 2024 is a done deal. Prime Minister Modi is certain to return. On the other hand, you can see that the opposition, while being demoralized by those election defeats, is also feeling cornered. They believe that agencies are being used against them. The media is against them. Uh, the entire machinery or state power is against them. And they want to find a way to hit back. The security breach in parliament gave them that, op that opportunity to, in a way, hit back at the government and raise questions. Being denied that opportunity, being denied the opportunity for the Home Minister to make a statement means that the opposition feels that they have really no voice left inside Parliament. So what do they do? Enter the well of the House, disrupt Parliament. What does the government do rather than have a, or, or the Speaker and the uh, Chairman of the Rajya Sabha, instead of having any kind of dialogue, decide, we're going to suspend you. So you have a complete breakdown of trust that is leading dangerously to an opposition mukt bharat you know that me... is the real danger in a multi-party democracy yeah. you want a strong opposition which is in a way going to hold the government accountable unfortunately the events of the last uh, 24 hours would suggest that the government has dug its heels in the opposition also is unrelenting and you have a complete breakdown which is extremely dangerous for the future of parliamentary democracy in this country. The manner of protests that have happened, Rajdeep Akshita here, the manner of protests that have happened inside parliament, it's something that we've seen for the last decade. That's the reality of it. Any issue, the opposition storms the well of the house, holds up placards, unacceptable, yes, but it's unfortunately become the norm. So what explains this kind of a suspension now? Well, I think, uh, 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 Akshita, you're right that over a period of time, this has been building up. 
uh, even when the BJP was in opposition, you will recall Arun Jaitley famously saying that disruption is a legitimate tactic. You can obstruct parliament. And an entire se session was watched out over uh, uh, suggestions that there were scams, that it, the 2G scam uh, during the uh, uh, Manmohan Singh government UPA2. The difference this time, I think, is this time the government has a ma brute majority. So the government knows that they can actually pass bills, get their legislative agenda done without even requiring the opposition support. And because we are at the end of the tenure of this government, the government feels that, you know, we will now browbeat the opposition into a situation where in any case we in all probability will win 2024. So mm. why should we be worried about what the opposition has to say? So I think that explains why this is happening now. As I said, it's significant that these this harsh action is being taken uh, barely a week after the uh, the Modi government or the BJP won a big victory in three state elections. Yeah. The opposition, for its part also, uh, feels that they have no real voice outside, that the entire system in a way is ranged against them. So parliament remains the one forum where they can take their placards, make a noise and at least challenge the government. Uh, it is as a, it is unfortunate. Just think about this, Akshita. Between 2014 and 19, about 60 MPs were suspended. Now we are talking of, with today's suspension, more than 200 having been suspended in the present Lok Sabha. Correct. And if, when you suspend 92 MPs, you're really taking out the heart of the opposition uh, and, and, and you're sending out the message that the government simply uh, is, if necessary, going to allow parliament to function without the opposition being present in the House, which I think is very dangerous for the future of parliamentary democracy. So in parliament, there's going to be no opposition. The government is getting its way in a, in that sense, Rajdi. But do you think that it also backfires on the government? Tomorrow you have an India meet. There's been a lot of talk about differences among these parties. But is these kind of issues perhaps that unites them like never before? Well, they will be united, Akshita. You're right. They will uh, Issues like this could unite them. But do they have the political... Uh, uh, acumen to take advantage of it? Do they have the issues, the leadership to actually offer a challenge to Mr. Modi? That's another matter. It's one thing what's happening in parliament. It's another thing what will happen on the sadak or the street. The BJP is confident that the voters are with them. They're with Prime Minister Modi and they will paint the opposition as disruptionists, as anarchists. Now, the opposition's challenge is how can you convert this seeming opportunity that you've got Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, uh, the, this this situation into an opportunity and claim that the government wants single party rule. Uh, it is not going to be easy for the opposition. Uh, only now we've just learned that Arvind Kejriwal has also been summoned by yeah. the enforcement directorate on the 21st. So the agencies, the pressure on the opposition is only mounting. In fact, there's a belief over the next one month, some other opposition leaders also could be summoned by the agency. So it's all out war. The best way to describe this is this is bad blood which has been building up and it's Correct. now all out war between the government and the opposition. Correct. Rajdeep, thank you very much for joining us.